interpretation of what's likely to happen. Uh, but that it was fun to put together. The transition, in fact, has been going uh, very well uh, with Ray Ossie and Craig Lundy uh, <coughs> stepping up to take over my full-time responsibilities. And of course, after the transition, I'll have a few <coughs> projects uh, that I pick uh, they're still about the magic of software, including things like how software can advance education and how software can advance healthcare around the world. And so, the foundation of the second digital decade, the advances taking place there, uh, will be very, very important in that quest. The second digital decade will be more focused on connecting people. It will be more focused on being user-centric. Microsoft will deliver platforms that will let people build applications. But those applications will run not only on the PC, they'll run up in the internet or in the cloud as we say, on the phone, in the car, in the TV. The applications will use the best of rich platforms in those internet services. When we talk about services, we mean a huge variety of things, things yet to be invented. The mapping services, the payment services, the uh, friends lists and storage that you can have uh, in a very effective way up in the cloud itself. These services will span work and business. Uh, the personal computer has always been a device that spanned that boundary. That's been part of the beauty of it. And so even things that are incredibly oriented to the business side will be be able to do at scale and, and simplify them with cloud-based approaches. So a lot of big advances will underlie this new class of applications. Things that we haven't tackled yet, things like uh, the ultimate change to all of TV or to reading or to healthcare and education, uh, those will be enabled uh, by these elements. The three key elements I'd highlight are first, High definition experiences everywhere. Screen technology is getting better. Not just the high definition displays, but projection uh, that will let us project onto every wall. Uh, your desk, we won't just have the computer on the desk, but in the desk. So meeting room, cable as you're collaborating. In the living room as you want to bring up and uh, play games with something like a surface or organize your photos. Uh, it will just be there, easy to manipulate, easy uh, to change and have multiple people connect up. The quality of the rendering, uh, whether it's playing something uh, like a game or walking through the downtown with a, a virtual earth type concept will be uh, very, very rich. 3D environments will exist for many of the web experiences, walking through a store, uh, uh, meeting uh, people in a, a social 3D in, environment. And so we'll apply high quality video, high quality audio uh, in a very pervasive way. Second, all of these rich devices will be service connected. And so getting the latest software, uh, the, the browsing the applications, and getting your data, you'll just take that for granted. The idea of when you take a photo that it shows up in the place that you like it to show up, uh, that will be <laughs> extremely simple. No longer will users have to bridge between the devices and they're the ones who have to remember what's where. By having the, essentially the, the master of what's going on, sort of in the cloud, things like backing up and connecting, searching across devices, uh, will be very simple. And the information, of course, can be shared across many users in a uh, <coughs> way. In fact, if you just pick up a device and authenticate who you are, then you'll connect up to your information. So when you get a new phone or uh, want to borrow a device, It'll be a, a very, very simple thing uh, to be up and running in a, in a strong way. As you're moving around, even uh, your activities that you want captured can be with stills and motion. And so organizing the memories uh, that you have, uh, the memories of your kids growing up, and having the system find what's relevant to you, present it in a rich way, that digital memory application will be one that uh, is broadly used and very important, and yet, Today, without these capabilities, uh, it's uh, something that you can't achieve. Uh, the devices will know your context, they'll know your location. Finally, the, the third element, uh, perhaps the one that people underestimate the most, I would say, is the power of natural user interface. 
The first digital decade was largely driven by the keyboard and the mouse. Yes, in the last two years, we've started to see the emergence of other modes of interaction. Touch uh, on Windows PC, touch on the iPhone, uh, the Surface uh, device that we're talking about. Uh, we started to see speech, uh, the tell me capability built into the phone, the Ford Sync, uh, where you get to talk and interact with your media or your phone capabilities. The reaction to those natural interface uh, implementations has been very dramatic. People are very interested in a simpler way of, of navigating the information. And so the, the pen with ink, uh, touch, visual recognition, all of these come together uh, with the, the other elements to create very new experiences. Uh, gestures so that you can get things done, sitting in front of the, uh, the, the TV set. And so we're just at the beginning of this, and this is something the software industry will build into the platform so individual developers don't have to go off and do that complicated work. Even areas where we haven't thought about software power, like retail experience, uh, walking in and picking a product you want to customize, or home automation um, is finally, I think, simple enough uh, that we can bring it forward uh, with natural user interface. So some key elements that are very different and show that the long-term research and innovation uh, that we've done over the previous years will uh, come together and be drivers for these next 10 years. A key building block, uh, certainly for Microsoft, is the Windows platform. Uh, we'll evolve that uh, and use it as a, a, a uh, really a, a, the centerpiece building block. Uh, this last year was an incredible year for PCs. Uh, PC sales were over 13%, of course, off a uh, really gigantic base, and it's been amazing to see that. Uh, next year, again, the prediction is for uh, double-digit growth. A year ago, we launched Vista. Uh, I'm pleased to say that we've got over 100 million uh, people using Vista now, and that's a, a very significant milestone <laughs> for the kind of applications development and uh, special uh, hardware work that, that we think is, is very important. We have great partners building neat new uh, form factor PCs using the unique capabilities. A lot of these are portable devices, a lot of them are far more stylish than anything you've seen before, smaller, uh, fitting into new ways that use, people use personal computers. We have online services. Uh, we and many other companies are seeing incredible growth in those. Uh, for us, our Windows Live now, 400 million people using those services, including the new version rolled out a few months ago. Windows Mobile, over 10 million uh, new users last year. And, uh, double that in the next year. Uh, so quite a variety of form factors and a growing platform there because as the capabilities of the phone have now gotten so rich, the breadth of applications uh, that you want to run there is getting larger and larger. And that is certainly an environment where the input has been a limiting factor uh, and the new platform capabilities will really uh, allow you to do applications that weren't possible before. I wanted to give you a quick glimpse of some of the things that excite us about uh, the latest developments with Vista, Live, and Mobile. Uh, so let me ask uh, Mika Kramer, who's the Director of Windows Product Management, uh, to come up and, and show us some of the highlights of what I've been talking about. 